dysfunctional vet. This is a work light set that I'm getting ready to put together. Bought this on Amazon. The pieces are the carrying handle for the light. The power connection for the lights, which is right here. And a tripod. which is packed in bubble wrap. Boy, these are stiff. We'll open this up more fully in just a moment. Check the camera frame real quick. All right, the way this fits in, you have a latch, you lift this up. This goes face down onto the hole, the center hole. This comes over. This latches back on and then secures down. And that is what holds the work lights in place. Very sturdy. I watched a video before I bought this, and I'll put the link for this system in. I'm thinking I paid $68 for it, but I'm not going to tell you. I remember for sure. So now let's put the light bar together, and I'll show you that process. It comes with a uh, plate of instructions. According to the instructions, the handle, which is this piece right here, will fit into these holes. This way you can handle the thing and you can turn it whatever direction you, you want and it has a base stand so that the bottom piece will sit on the ground if necessary, which it could be. And then you have these holes out here on the edge, here and here, and you put your lights into them. So let's make that happen. The assembly is pretty straightforward. This has a screw on it which will attach that. I'm going to have to get a Phillips for that. But I'm going to actually attach these right now. The next thing As you notice, as you can see, these cables are a little bit short for the light. That's not a big deal. To get this to work, you need to loosen these. Hope, hope that's still in frame. You loosen these, get this out of the way, because these are made to stand by themselves, as you can see. As you can see, they do stand, but on the bottom, the bottom plate, this is your bottom plate here. This thumb screw has to go through there, and then these will fit onto, let me make sure I'm getting this where it needs to be. It's getting a little twisted. There we go. And then these thumbs screw down onto here with a washer. Oops. With a lock washer and a washer. And we'll tighten all that up. We'll do the other one and then I'll show you the finished product.
assembled, you have these adjustable thumb screws so that you can tilt and lock it into place. And right here, let me get the wire out of the way. Let me zoom in a bit. There was also a, a thumb screw that fits into this, but these thumb screws have a habit of loosening up. And if I have a fan in here, I don't want these lights turning. So I opted to bore this out and put a quarter inch bolt through there with a Loctite on the bottom, washer on the top. Didn't need a washer on the bottom because of the reinforcing of this tube, the reinforcing of this tube. And everything's good. Now, let me spin this little baby. You have a nut here and a nut right here that holds the handle on. I used Loctite on them and I torqued them down to nine pounds and that seemed pretty good. Let me back this off just a little bit. Let's take a look at the finished product. These are the work lights fully extended. The height is approximately four feet off the ground. This is a 1000 lumen. They make higher power but for my purposes, this will work. I opted to make this a permanent mount with those um, quarter inch bolts. As I said, there were thumb screws up there that would allow you to remove those if you wanted. There's a stand right here so you could set them upright. And I opted not to uh, make these removable because I have several removable lights both plug-in and battery powered. But every now and then you just need a little more light in what you're doing. So that's why I bought this. And I'll be testing it out later tonight to find the optimum positions for depending upon what I'm doing, whether I'm cutting logs or um, doing something else. Now I bought a plug-in light that I used for welding. And I had the thing a little too close and I damaged the glass on it. So I continue to use that for welding, but I've moved it off a bit. That's also a ground mount, but it can be mounted on a, a pole if I wanted to. And I have done that and I'll use uh, C-clamps on the, on the frame on the bottom, which is right here. And then I'll mount it onto, uh, it's a thing that I threw together just to hold links of pipe or or whatever stock I'm cutting and it works good as far as that goes. Now I want to discuss something with you and that is this cable. This stuff is very robust and it's got a lot of weight to it. So while it has a hanger, this screw right here, which has also got uh, red Loctite on it, so when it dries it will be very hard to remove. I'm also planning to wire tie this cable up here, but not to this pole, because that way I can lower it. And that will take additional strain off of the connections inside here, since I haven't opened this up to find out how they, how they have it tied off in there. Sometimes it's an overhand loop, and in the case of like solar panels, there is no strain relief whatsoever. So if there's a lot of tension on it, it'll just damage the inside of the unit. So I'm going to go ahead and wire tie this up with a permanent wire tie. The base is interesting. You can lower this thing so low that the bottom pole, this section right here, will be literally lower than your extended feet. And so you need to be aware of that. Right now, I just have it in a real low, stable position, so I have four points of contact here, 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 and then in the center while I was putting this together. Now, I told you that I put these bolts in here and I locked them down. I can still turn these, but I don't have to worry about the thumb screw loosening up because this has been essentially welded with the Loctite red. The last thing I want to discuss is the lock mechanism. This is the thing that 
in a video I saw on this. No link in the description. Come on, babe. There we go. As I say, good dog. There's a hole in the center of this shaft coming up that this bar is going to lock onto. You need to make sure that the handle is to the back of the locking mechanism. And the locking mechanism is real simple. It comes up like this, flops over, these come back, this lifts off. So make sure that you have the handle to the back. You cannot lock it when the handle is forward because the handle will actually interfere with this and this locking pin that you see here. All in all, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, when you move it, it does shake. When you move it, it does shake just a little bit. But I'm pretty happy with it. As I say, I'll be testing it out later tonight to check on it. The last thing to cover is your power switches are here to turn it on or off. And I haven't played with those yet. The instructions are kind of funky. Uh, they're well written. If you have half a brain, you'll be able to figure it out without it. If you want to remove the lights, remember, use the thumb screws that come with it. This is a thumb screw, but I really don't, I don't plan to ever remove these. And for that reason, I went with the bolt and then Loctited it. Hope that helps. Until next video, Dysfunctional Vet, out.